This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News. Today I'm reviewing the video of a patient with acromegaly who has residual pituitary adenoma that has been stable over at least eight years or so since surgery. These are coronal images. And as usual, we find the cella by looking for the carotid siphon. This is the cella. You can tell that it's enlarged, it's abnormal. There's abnormal tissue here. This patient has had pituitary surgery. A couple of things to point out. This is the visual pathways. It's V-shaped in this patient due to a little prolapse of the visual pathways into a large, partially secondary empty cella. Visual pathways, this is the infundibulum or the pituitary stalk. Normally it goes straight down the middle. Here it's curving off towards the left to just a little bit of residual pituitary tissue here. This patient has partial hypopituitarism as a result. And you can see here some scar tissue, carotid arteries, over here in the right cavernous sinus, expanding the cavernous sinus and enlarging it and growing into the middle cranial fossa is residual tumor. All of this white area is a combination of cavernous sinus, blood, and tumor. This is the cavernous sinus on the other side. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it looks like here. get an idea as I go through there back and forth, the comparison of one side to the other. So my original goal was to show you the serial MRI studies of this patient and what we look for to see if there's any evidence of growth, but this tumor has not changed. This patient has not received radiotherapy. This tumor is literally sitting there making growth hormone. Doesn't seem to be growing. And you might see this is a carotid artery. These little areas here are cranial nerves, here, here, and here. These are the nerves that supply movement to the eye muscles. If the tumor hemorrhages and compresses that nerve, the patient might have double vision. One other interesting thing about this scan is the nasal anatomy. Now I'll show you a scan later in this series of a patient who had endoscopic pituitary surgery. This patient had endonasal surgery where the surgeon went through the nose. This is a normal nasal anatomy, the nasal septum and the turbinates. They're lined with mucosa, totally normal. So the endoscopic endonasal procedure takes a lot of this stuff out and alters the anatomy of the patient. The endonasal microscopic approach preserves this normal anatomy. So there's less sinonasal morbidity following the traditional surgical procedure versus the endoscopic procedure that we'll discuss in, in a uh, subsequent video. So again, this is residual tumor. It's within the cavernous sinuses. This is a normal cavernous sinus on this side abnormal on this side. So you can compare that and see this is expanded by a tumor that enhances with contrast. Also uh, on this film, as we often see in acromegaly, the calvarium or the skull bone is very thick because of the bone growth due to chronic growth hormone excess. All right, so this is an example of recurrent pituitary tumor in the right cavernous sinus in a patient with acromegaly who happens to be very well controlled on Pegvisimont. Uh, once again, Dr. Lewis Blevins, Pituitary World News. Thanks for joining us.